Holy s***. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I am going to be making versions of Coraline dolls, but of me and my partners, to give to my parents as a gift so they don't miss us while we're in Europe. Um, if you don't know, we are meant to be moving to Europe, uh, but quarantine and COVID have kept us here in my parents' basement. So we have been living with them. Uh, we moved it in April. It is now June, so months. And I thought it would be funny to give them terrifying, creepy doll versions of us so that they don't miss us in the future. Um, I'm inspired, I was inspired by Rachel Maxey's uh, little Coraline version of herself. Uh, she did not choose to terrify a beloved family member with it though, she just kept it. Um, this is my little twist on that. So, and then obviously I'm making um, my husband Cody and our girlfriend Janie as well. So I have some stuff. Basically, my plan is to make our heads out of clay. I bought air dry clay, it's called model air, mostly because I'm hoping that it's slightly less heavy than polymer clay, because only the head will be made out of clay, and I don't want them to just droop over because their head weighs too much. So I've never worked with this before. We'll see how it goes. So I bought that. Um, some skin tone to match uh, ours to dye their heads. Uh, then some embroidery floss. This is going to be for Cody's hair because he's got that sexy salt and pepper. Um, I did buy embroidery floss for Janie and my hair. Can't find it though. Um, so I will probably just dig into my embroidery stash when I find that because that is also currently missing. Um, then our bodies are going to be made out of a wire armature. So I just bought floral wire um, and I'm just gonna wrap it around and try to make those like kind of elongated bodies that the dolls in the movie have. And then I'll do cotton batting around those to fill us out a bit and then put a tin foil head on to then wrap um, the clay around. So I'm not using too, too much clay again so that they aren't too heavy and awful. So I think that's everything. Um, this is the fabric that I'll put around the cotton batting. All of this is just from my stash um, that I brought over to my parents' house because my mom also sews and it was supposed to be just like a present for her and then we moved in as well, better present. Uh, so that's just coming out of my stash. These things I purchased special. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Oh, buttons, I also got buttons for their eyes because that's like the whole point of the project. So just three little eyes. Um, it's like they were made for thrumples. So yeah, that's the project and I'm gonna get started now. I think first thing I'm gonna do is work on the armature and the tin foil so I can do the heads and give them time to dry. Uh, the big thing here is it's going to be a surprise for my parents. Um, so I have to be done with certain steps before they get home from work because I am still furloughed, so <laughs> I have nothing going on to my day to day, but most of my, both my parents are back at work. Um, so I'll have to stash them somewhere when they get home. The first thing I did for this project was design the dolls in Procreate. I had an idea of what I wanted to do, and I don't always design my projects digitally before working on them, but for this one I knew that a lot of the differentiation between, especially Janie and myself, would be in the shape of our heads and the clothes we were wearing. So I wanted to get a good idea of what those would look like before starting out on the project, and especially before shaping the heads. I then jumped in and started designing the wire armatures, which went surprisingly quickly considering the last time I did wire sculpture was probably a decade ago. So, I have my three horrifying tinfoil babies. I love them. 
They're perfect in every way. Um, I'm going to cover their heads in uh, clay now, which will probably make them more terrifying and not less terrifying. But that's not not what we're going for. So I'm going to do that. And I think I'm going to give them, I'm going to put Janie and Cody down. Janie's helped at all. It's fine. So I think I'm going to do the head, the neck and the shoulders in clay so that we don't have the floppy head problem. Um, and then the rest of the body will be the cotton batting and fabric over that. So that's the next step. Also gluing Janie's head back on because it just rolled across the table. Adding the clay to the dolls was not terribly difficult. The one thing I wanted to focus on, however, was creating dimension with the nose and the eye sockets. The really nice thing about the dolls in the movie is that they're not one dimensional when it comes to their faces. They have a very prominent nose and eye socket feature that makes them look more expressive really simply. to drive so our, our horror dolls have to go somewhere oh smart terrifying dolls terrifying <laughs> murder closet. closet just put them next to the poop hole uh. okay let's hope she doesn't need her spray starch I just got out of the shower and I was going to check, it's the next day, and I was going to check on my terrifying clay babies. They got so much worse. So they're here in the room of doom and the clay cracked as it was drying. I gave them this like horrifying shattered faces. I... <laughs> I didn't think they could get scarier, and they definitely, definitely did. So I'm just gonna close the door and worry about it later. So I put my face on. I made myself some hot chocolate because I deserve it. And they're just so much worse. <laughs> when I was in pastry school, um, which I have a degree in baking and pastry, we had to do bread sculptures in our advanced breads class. And we had, we decided it was around Easter. We decided to make like a little Easter basket with bunnies in it. Cause we thought that'd be super cute but no one in my little group had ever worked with dead dough before, which is basically bread dough that doesn't have any yeast in it, so it won't rise. And the theory behind dead dough is it's essentially clay and you can mold it into anything. But you bake dead dough similarly to how you would a pollen or clay or something like that, but because of the moisture in dead dough, when, it is, um, it, when it's cooking, it'll expand very slightly. So our bunnies came out with these like cracked amorphous zombie heads and they were truly horrifying. Um, I asked my friends from pastry school to send pictures. So if I have them, I will upload them somewhere. Um, anyways, our uh, instructor, the chef that was teaching the class came in and saw our bunnies and told us that if they were real bunnies and someone had shot them and given to them to him to cook and eat, he would refuse 
and that is when my lovely friend Jill went running and crying out of the class because it had been such a frustrating day and such a long week of classes and um, not a great end. So I'm having flashbacks to a rather traumatic college experience at the moment. However, unlike Dead Doe, I think I might be able to fix these. What my plan is, um, is to take the clay, the same clay I used the first time, and make a slurry with it. So basically just water it down quite a bit um, and try to use that slurry to patch these cracks. Um, the dolls are supposed to look homemade, so they don't need to look perfect and they are supposed to be creepy. Not this creepy, however. So we will try the slurry mixture see where that goes, um, might be just as horrifying. Uh, there's a solid chance that it's going to be just as horrifying. Fixing the heads actually went much more smoothly than I was anticipating. I just created the slurry with the clay like I had intended and filled in all of the cracks. It actually was really simple and went pretty fast, which was nice because I had not worked this process into my original timeline at all. Um, our little friends are fully skinned. Uh, they have a layer of the cotton batting and then this cotton jersey over them. Um, it's not super clean, but that's okay because their clothes are going over it and you won't really see. Um, the next step on the dolls themselves is I'm going to paint their skin. Um, and so I'm gonna do obviously their heads need skin and then their little hands and feet as well because they'll stick out a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna paint the whole body because I think that's just a waste of paint. Um, and I have to do three of them, of course. Um, and then... So, Cody's neck snapped. Um, he, all the cracks are gone other than that, um, but it just couldn't hold up the weight of his head. So I just hot glued around where the crack is, and you can still see it, but obviously I'm going to paint over it. And then he's gonna get a scarf, so you're not gonna see this at all. The scarf will be glued on, so you'll never see this seam anyways, but I am still going to paint it just in case. So today I'm going to paint them and then uh, put their clothes together while they're dry. And I'm gonna show you their clothes right now because I cut those out when I was on camera. I have the doll's clothes here all cut out. Um, my camera was in use elsewhere, so I just went ahead and cut them. Um, basically, I just laid the dolls on the fabric and then um, traced around them because it's not like they're going to be moving in the clothes, so we don't have to worry about fit all that much. So um, this is Janie's doll, so she's going to have this cute little um, fabric, uh, this flower fabric um, that I stole from my mom <laughs> um, from her mask stash, and then. Um, this little green overcoat over it. I'm gonna make like a little like cowl neck almost to make it, the idea is that they're gonna be like really comfy clothes, uh, cozy clothes to pull in that sort of Coraline Pacific Northwest look that that movie has. Uh, so that's Jamie. And then this is going to be my doll. So she's got um, this linen that I actually used for a Dapper Day outfit uh, last spring. And then this green fabric that is the same as Janie's overcoat. So they all sort of tie together and go together. What? Wash has something to say. And then this is Cody. So his little shirt, it's all folded up weird here. Um, and then he's going to get a cowl neck as well. I believe he might just get cuffs. I haven't decided yet. Um, this will be his little scarf and then he'll be his little pants. So we're all gonna kind of match, uh, coordinate, which is gonna be super cute. Uh, I will machine stitch the clothes together and then I'm just going to zigzag the edges anywhere where I would usually hem because I do want them to look kind of beat up, handmade sort of idea. Um, so zigzagged hem will do that perfectly, but first I'm going to paint them. Painting was a very smooth process that actually went very quickly. The only thing unusual I did was I added a little bit of shadowing in the eye sockets and then under the chin, basically giving the dolls a contour. Cody says 
they're less terrifying when they're painted. Um, I might disagree. I think they need eyes and hair to make them, you know, not the thing of nightmares. But they're fully painted. Um, so they're gonna go back in the murder closet to dry. And then I'm going to spend the rest of my time today sewing their clothes. I left my white claw on the other table. Um, so the outfits are all done. So I'm gonna get them dressed. Um, they're all dry. Uh, I'm gonna get them dressed and then I think I'll probably be done for today because it's gonna take me some time to get them all dressed and like ready. Um, and I have baby cousins coming over in a couple hours. So I need to pick up a little bit and not have creepy murder dolls out. Um, so I'll probably stash them away once they're dressed and then do buttons and hair tomorrow. Dressing the dolls did not go smoothly. Getting Cody's butt into these pants was insanely difficult. I basically had to completely cut them apart and then glue them back on on his body. The hips were not large enough, which is something I'm used to with my clothes, not his. And then I had to create a patch out of the floral fabric that I used for Janie's dress to cover up his exposed hip. I ended up not minding the way it looked because I think it's kind of cute and pulls everyone together. Now with my bow, we all have a cute little floral pattern on, but it was definitely a frustrating process. I told you once, I'll tell you twice. You have my heart in Holy sh Truly, usually don't mind spiders, um, but when they're giant and crawling across murder dolls, this is just too much. <laughs> just awful. My boys are basically done. Uh, the last thing I need to do is just put their hair on, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. And then Janie and I need mouths because I did not have red paint for our lipstick, but I did get some. So I'm going to finish them up today and probably give them to my parents this evening. I'm excited. still rather horrifying, but I think in a really cute way. Um, I think it's really obvious who is who. I love Cody's little beanie. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. So now all I have to do is show my mother um, and definitely 100% get her reaction on camera. There's a chance she's gonna cry. <gasps> sitting in her bedroom now. Uh, if you guys did like it, please, please, please do like and subscribe down below. I will be doing lots more videos like this. Uh, there are tons up already. And please, if you found me from TikTok or Instagram or Reddit or anything like that, just comment that down below. I'd love to see where people are coming from. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.